The 1975 Laurel Jean Mitchell murder cold case has finally been solved after 47 years. In August 1975, the murder of 17-year-old North Webster teen Laurel Jean Mitchell left residents of the small town stunned and shaken. 46 years later cold case investigators with the Indiana State Police are seeking the public's assistance in trying to solve a murder case that occurred in either Kosciuszko or Noble County. According to police captain and former detective Kevin Smith, a then 17-year-old Laurel Jean Mitchell was last seen leaving work at Epworth Forest in North Webster at approximately 10.15 p.m. on August 6, 1975. She was found dead the next day in the Elkhart River in rural Noble County. Today marks 40 years since 17-year-old Laurel Mitchell's body was found along the Elkhart River. It's a case that's gone unsolved now for four decades, and her family is still hoping for justice. Mitchell disappeared August 6, 1975, as she was walking along Epworth Forest Road in Kosciuszko County. She had planned to meet friends at a local amusement park. She never made it. Her body was found the next morning in the Elkhart River, nearly 15 miles away. She was sexually assaulted and drowned. Police believe she knew her killer. Last year, they said they were looking for a person who may have stopped by the nearby fire station that night. If you have information that might solve this cold case, call the Indiana State Police. It's believed Laurel Jean Mitchell knew the person who assaulted her and Indiana State Police think the person may have been in a group of four or five girls and boys who were from Delphi, Indiana and may have performed as a singing group at the Cokesbury Inn in Epworth Forest on August 6, 1975. The members of the group were approximately 16 to 22 years old at the time and traveled in one vehicle and it's believed that they stopped at the North Webster Fire Station at around 10.30 p.m. that evening. On August 7, 1975, on the following morning, 15 miles away, a man and his son who were fishing in the Elkhart River in Noble County, discovered the body of a young woman in the water. The body was quickly identified as Laurel. An autopsy revealed that Laurel's cause of death had been drowning. She showed no obvious signs of trauma aside from several bruises on her hands and shoulder. Laurel was fully clothed, however it was determined that she had been sexually assaulted. On February 6, 2023 two men were arrested for Laurel Jean Mitchell's murder. We begin today with breaking news out of Noble County, where police tell us after nearly half a century, they believe they have solved a cold case. Indiana State Police arrested two men for the death of Laurel Mitchell in 1975. Thank you for joining us this noon hour. I'm Krista Miller. Our Tyler Brummett was at the news conference this morning and is live in Albion with what we're learning. Tyler. Yeah, Krista, no doubt a major update in this case. State police say that they are relieved that they have finally made two arrests in this case. Again, it was nearly 50 years ago when 17-year-old Laurel Mitchell left work and she never returned home. The next day, she was found at a boat ramp near the Elkhart River. Now, I want you to take a good look at your screen right now. Police arresting these two men on your screen that is 67 year old fred bandy jr and 67 year old john wayne layman they're both charged with murder in mitchell's death court records say detectives found that at some point that evening bandy and layman picked mitchell up before taking her out of their car and drowning her an autopsy showed mitchell made what police are calling a violent struggle to survive that drowning a noble county sheriff's department detective says he spoke with a man about the case in 2019 he says that the man told him that bandy and layman admitted to him at a party that they had killed mitchell when the topic of her death came up police say dna testing of laurel's clothes eventually led officers to the arrest of these two men. How did you sleep last night? Um, good for a little while, but we're not done yet. And we should also mention that Bandy and Lehman are both set to be in court tomorrow. Obviously, again, a big update in this case tonight at four, five, six, and seven. We're going to look more into those court documents and bring you the very latest. Again, they are detailed. They lay out, Krista, what really was 
a difficult set of circumstances to be able to find these two men and eventually charge them. Again, we'll look into those court documents tonight on 21 Alive News. Now, Tyler, uh, the man that we heard from, from Indiana State Police, he um, alluded to uh, more investigation to be done. Uh, not exactly um, a day of celebration. W would you say that? I think that is put really accurately, Krista, because as you just mentioned, today is not a day of celebration. Again, you know, we're talking about a 17 year old who lost her life. Granted, yes, it was nearly 50 years ago but we're still talking about the loss of life. Police say that they've been working hard. And that man who you did hear from, he worked about two decades on this case. So there's so many police officers putting in the time, the resources to try to find the people who are perhaps responsible for this. And they believe that they have done that. Again, two men arrested. Obviously they keep reiterating that these two men are innocent until proven guilty, they will be in court tomorrow. So we'll have to wait and see what happens as the judicial process plays out. Okay, no doubt a big day in this case after nearly 50 years. Tyler, we appreciate that. We'll look forward to your continuing coverage. In 2019, a male DNA profile was developed from Laurel Jean Mitchell's clothing after it was re-examined by the Indiana State Police Laboratory Division. In late 2022, Indiana State Police Detective Arthur Smith obtained a voluntary DNA buckle swab sample from suspect Fred Bandy Jr. at his residence in Goshen, Indiana. On January 13, 2023, a forensic scientist with the biology unit of the Indiana State Police Laboratory Division showed a certificate of analysis to a detective which showed that Fred Bandy Jr. is 13 billion times more likely to be the contributor of the DNA in Laurel Jean Mitchell's clothing than any other unknown person. An acquaintance of Fred Bandy Jr. told a detective on July 3, 2014 that Fred Bandy Jr. told him he had committed the crime that took place at Mallard's Roost after the Lauren Jean Mitchell murder happened. Fred Bandy Jr. went on to commit crimes against children after the murder of Laurel Jean Mitchell and is a registered sex offender. John Wayne Lehman was the other suspect arrested and on a date with a woman from Noble County in 1975 whilst driving her home he had told her he committed a crime with a friend named Fred Bandy. John Lehman provided details of the crime to the woman which were consistent to the findings made by police where Laurel Jean Mitchell's body was found and were also consistent to the anatomical findings from the autopsy. Fred Bandy Jr. and John Wayne Lehman used Bandy's 1971 Oldsmobile to bring Laurel Jean Mitchell to the Mallard Roost public access site in Noble County, forcibly removed her from the vehicle, and deliberately drowned her. After 47 years the cold case of Laurel Jean Mitchell has finally been solved and her family can finally get justice.